quagmire clusterfuck. Good evening, everyone. So, folks, the only way to describe now what is going on with these people, if you can even call them people, is a total and complete quagmire clusterfuck. What is going on with them in the media is a complete disaster, all of which they have put out. It's totally contradictory. It's a complete mess. It's actually messier than ever. The rope is starting to come apart and unravel, and it's going to snap sooner rather than later. I would say it's probably going to snap Tuesday and thereafter once Amid Scabies' book of lies and follies comes out. Let's get started. But first, wanted to share this public service announcement with you all regarding Ozempic. Hi, it's Dr. Anna, and I'm just discussing Ozempic. So I'm going up the elevator in my medical building, and there's always pharmaceutical reps going up and down to visit all the doctor's offices, bringing Starbucks coffees, muffins, lunches, and samples. And one of the pharmaceutical reps looked quite gaunt, and I said, how long have you been on Ozempic? And he said to me, well, how did you know? And I said, well, because Ozempic is very good for the dermal filler business. Um, let me just say, based on recent pictures of Megan, she has yet to make very much needed dermal filler appointments because that skin's sagging very, very badly. Let's go on. You lose 75% of your muscle and 25% fat, and it should be the other way around. And without making proper lifestyle changes, the weight rebound is tremendous. And people don't realize that because you're messing around with the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, there can be some significant side effects, um, thyroid and pancreatic related, as well as um, delayed gastric emptying leading to aspiration. Okay. Hi. So based on what the good doctor has said here, the weight rebound from Ozempic is tremendous, meaning people are going to be gaining the weight that they lost back, and then some. So it's going to be absolutely hilarious to see what Megan's um, Ozempic diet is going to do and what that's going to look like when it starts to go sideways. And then one more thing before we jump into the murky, muddy waters of the gutter and sewer known otherwise as Sussex land. My good friend Sue Smith, our good friend Sue Smith, is has published a book. The book was written by her father a long time ago. I believe it was in the 1960s, and they only found it after her mother died. It's called Never Pet a Porcupine by Dr. D. Rossi, and that's like his pen name, and he was an artist as well. And a little side note, the body language guy also known as the Royal Rogue, did the artwork for this, and it's absolutely adorable. Sue's father has a long career in education and was child-focused. He was a teacher for children with learning disabilities, an elementary school principal, director of children's services for the United Cerebral Palsy Association in the Northeast, and, is, and an assistant professor of education. So he clearly knows what he's talking about. And this book is absolutely fabulous. So if you're looking for something to buy a little stocking stuffer for your kids or grandchildren, check this book out. Um, I will put the link to where to buy this book. It's Amazon in the video box description. So let's, let's give our girl, um, you know, let's get this book. I'm sure it's absolutely fabulous. First off, folks, the first contradictory, ridiculous thing from TMZ, Meghan Markle told King Charles two royals questioned Archie's skin color. Well, I'm not going to play the clip from the Oprah interview because a lot of you have mentioned that it, you know, the sight of it absolutely makes you sick, quite understandably. But in that interview, she said that she's not going to name names because it would be very bad for that person, singular, that person, or it would be very detrimental to that person or whatever. So now all of a sudden, two people makes you know, two makes people. So which one is it? The lies, folks, the lies. I mean, who's lying? 
you know who's lying? Megan's lying that it was one person. And Amid Scabies is lying that it's two people. It probably never happened. From the mirror, this is great. Meghan Markle eyes up the Crown spinoff on ripping up the royal ro the royal ru rule book, but Harry unsure. Meghan Markle is said to be eyeing up working on a spinoff of the Crown, which would depict her and Prick Harry's ripping up the royal playbook and stepping away from the British monarchy. First of all, this this just shows that this woman has no talent, which we all know, but it's it's just proving that fact even more to Hollywood. She has no original ideas. Now, th the whole world, because they put out their stuff daily in the media, has already heard this story told a million different ways just in the media. And then we have... We had the Harry and Meghan shit flicks documentary. We had Spare. Now we're getting Endgame. We had Finding Freedom. Uh, we had the Oprah interview. How many more times can this story be told? No one, it, no one was interested in it after the first one. The I mean, it, at least you know all of these things are supposed to be um, nonfiction. You know, the crowd or her spinoff, which is never going to happen, and we'll get into that more in a second. Second. At least that'll be fiction. So it being a fictional drama, can you can only imagine what's going to be said in that hypothetically, because again, Netflix isn't going to do that. We've heard the story so many times. And, and if they did do it, it's just going to contradict more and more of what's happened here. And they're just going to look worse and worse. Go for it. Meghan Markle and Prick Harry are said to be divided over her secret meetings. Well, I guess they're not so secret. We're hearing about it. For a spinoff of The Crown, which would focus solely on them. Well, who else would it focus on, folks? The first part of the sixth series of The Crown dropped on, onto Netflix earlier this month, and prior to it coming out, it was revealed that the Prince and Princess of Wales felt violated. Well, I'm sure they did, because quite violating. But now it's claimed that Megan's plan could rile up her in-laws even more. We'll get to some of that more. And that's exactly what she wants to do, which comes as she looks to pitch a spin-off series of The Crown that would center around her and her husband, Harry, ripping up the royal playbook after the departure from the British monarchy, meaning they're the ones who can't get along. Amid the couple's five-year-long 80 million pound Netflix deal, which they signed in 2020 to create a string of programs. Yeah, well, Megan is said to be planning a secret move. Well, you know, she's also so stupid because she puts out her secret moves and tries to manifest all of these things. And then everybody attacks on it, attacks all of her secret moves and manifestate, wannabe manifestations. And they they get attacked and mocked. So then it never happens. So she's so stupid. With the former actress considering approaching the people behind the crown, Heat Magazine reports that she wants to pitch an idea for a new Netflix show. As the storylines, first of all, look at this dress. I had to put it in here. One of the sugars put it up and was talking about how great she is. She looks about as good as what's going on as their PR. As the storylines depicted on the show creep closer to the present day, Megan wants to set up a meeting with the Crown writer-producer Peter Morgan, according to the outlet, who reported a source spilled. She really thinks the series is top quality and feels that Peter would do an incredible job creating a show that would feature actors playing them both now, doing their charity work around the world. What charity work is that? This is where the total fiction comes in, folks. So two Invictus Games appearances, maybe three, I mean, I, I, I don't know, I don't really care. So let's just say two Invictus Games appearances and a couple of shitty speeches, and that's their charity work around the world. The magazine adds that the insider went on, Megan's keen for someone of Peter's caliber to do a spin-off that, that charts the new chapter of Megan and Harry ripping up the royal rule book. What's new about that? But all for a good cause. In her mind, the drama would be a really tense story about how they risked everything to help 
others. Well, I thought they left because of the racism. I thought they left for financial freedom. I thought that they left for X, Y, and Z, etc., etc. Now they left and risked everything to help others. Good Lord. But although Megan is more than keen for the above to happen, Harry is said to be worried. The Duke is said to think that by them working on a project like this, it could open them up to more scrutiny, just like they were mocked on South Park. Well, maybe there's a moment of clarity, and it will absolutely open them up to more scrutiny. And I can tell you this, Prick Harry, whatever South Park did with you guys, which was totally genius, is going to be a walk in the park compared to what you'll get if this fallacy actually goes through. Harry feels it's too soon to turn everything into a movie or TV show, but not soon enough for a Netflix documentary, books, interviews, uh, etc., etc. Not too soon for that. Especially knowing that it would pick up on very personal things that he spoke about in his book, some of which he does have regrets about. He can't take any more public humiliation. Well, you better fucking, you better pull up your socks, Harry, and, and hold on tight because that's coming. Whether you make this, this, whether this happens or not, you're going to get more public humiliation. So better get tight and maybe get a Xanax prescription. The mirror has reached out to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's representatives for comment. They did not e immediately respond. Why? Because they gave this, they, this is their article. That's why they didn't respond. Crick Harry, ready to forget Royal Row, but Megan refuses, says new book. Amid Scabies claims the Duke of Sussex has abandoned a demand for an apology from his family. Yeah, right, because we hear about that every day in the news as well. The Duke of Sussex is ready to put the bitter feud with his family behind him and move on, but the Duchess of Sussex refuses to have anything to do with him as a new as anything to do with them, a new book claims. And so they just said here that Harry's ready to forget, to forget but Megan refuses, but Megan wants, doesn't want any, in, in another article, Megan, or part of that article, it says Megan doesn't want to do, have anything to do with them and not ready to forget. Megan was, has reportedly moved on from the royal family drama. Is there a lack of communication within the Sussex uh, PR team and Megan? Or is this just Megan putting these things out, forgetting the, what she says? Probably the latter. And then we come to Ms. Amid Scabies. Amid Scabies is very angry with what's going on. I saw these tweets and I'm like, what is she talking about? From Amid Scabies on Twitter, Google Translate does not make you bilingual. I'm like, what does this mean? Whether you like my work or loathe it, well, I, you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone that likes your work. All I ask is that if you are reading coverage about what's supposedly inside Endgame, please also read the book itself. Incorrect and bad translations, snippets without context, leaks, etc. Do not tell the full or accurate story. Thank you. Oh, because you know all about full and accurate stories. From the Daily Beast, Meghan Markle never wants to set foot in the UK again. New book, End Game Claims. Another contradiction. Now Google Translate permitting, so this is what he's referring to when he was saying Google Translate does not make you bilingual. Now Google Translate permitting, we know why. In an et excerpt of the new Amid Scabies book, Endgame, published in French magazine Paris Match, the magazine says that according to Scabies, Megan never wants to set foot again in this, in this England where she never felt at home. Scobie is quoted as saying she is willing to she is unwilling to dive back into that soap, soap opera by ever returning to the UK. What, what, what can I say here that already hasn't been said? And while Harry is reportedly keen to reestablish relations with his birth family, he is said 
he is said by Scaby to have told friends, I'm ready to forget. I thought he wasn't ready for to forget, and she doesn't want to forget, but she's mad at them, but she wants to... I'm ready forget to forget get a get an apology or an explanation at this point who cares right who cares right uh you two care cuz that's all you talk about his father the king king sees seems less amenable who cares you do according to a translation of the Paris match article circulating on reddit which I'm going to point out here, the fact that these these journalists are looking on Reddit means that the people talking on social media, these journalists find very credible. Charles ignored a request from Harry to meet up when he was in London for legal action against the British tabloids in March. Scobie took to a social media to urge people to be cautious about what translation said in his book, which will hit the shelves on Tuesday. Well, you know, translations is just translating words. It's not translating meaning amid. The translations are going to come through no matter what. And I guess we'll have to just see on Tuesday. Scoby writes that Harry has not managed to find a common ground with his family and has accepted the idea that will perhaps never change, especially with his brother, who flatly refuses to speak to him. Well, I don't think anyone blames him. Poor Harry. The big bad William won't speak to Harry. Scobie has also detailed on the Sussex eviction from Frogmore Cottage, their Windsor home, saying that Harry appealed to his father not to throw them out of the property, saying, do you want to see your grandchildren anymore? Well, is that not the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? Because he's never sees his grandchildren, so you can't threaten somebody with something that they never had in the first place. He adds that Princess Anne urged Charles to make the move, picking them off the royal estate. Scobie says that although Harry and Meghan sent Christmas gifts to William and Kate's children, they didn't even receive a text message in response. Scobie is quoted citing a source saying of Kate Middleton, she spent more time talking about Meghan than with Meghan. Yeah, that's in Megan's deluded mind. I believe that she didn't spend much time talking to Megan, but Megan just thinks that she talks about her and thinks that she actually cares. The book also has an, an antidote saying that Kate shuddered on hearing Megan on hearing Megan's name. Well, pretty much everybody does. Intriguingly, Scobie writes that it was William who, behind the scenes, pushed hardest for Andrew to be kicked out of the royal family following the Epstein scandal. Well, who, who I think most people would agree. Scobie says that it was William who convinced his grandmother to take action against her favorite son and adds that Charles was concerned for Andrew's mental health. Per the translation, Scobie says Charles acts with his head and his heart, but William is colder. He wants the job done and has no problem with casualties along the way. Well, right there, it sounds like it's into innocent casualties. Prince Andrew made his bed and he has to lay in it. So not only was, you know, Prince Harry, it sounds like, and I remember a lot of articles about this, Harry and Meghan were horrified by the disastrous car crash, not the fake car crash like in New York City, the car crash interview that he did with the BBC. They were horrified. So they probably would have done the same thing, but William's the big villain. Inside Endgame, the new Harry and Meghan book that promises to make royal family feel ashamed. I doubt the royal family is going to feel ashamed. The royal family is probably most likely and probably most definitely going to feel vindicated because this, again, is just going to be more lies and more contradictions, and it's just going to prove who Harry and Meghan, and actually, and on top of that, who Harry, Meghan, and the Midscabies actually are. The only people that are, should, feel, should feel ashamed, maybe Harry, maybe a mid might feel ashamed when this comes out once they get bashed and absolutely dragged. Meghan probably won't feel ashamed because she has no shame, 
None of these people really do. They're going to be humiliated and clowned like they should be. It's not going to be the royal family. This is going to be a total vindication. And I believe on Tuesday, if it can, you know, we don't think it could go any more south for these people, but it's going to. So let's enjoy the show starting on Tuesday. So that's all I have for you folks. Um, Quagmire clusterfuck. That's who they are. That's what they did. That's what they do. That's what's going on. So definitely looking forward to your comments. Talk to you later.